Hello, this is Don Potter, and welcome to another uh, study of uh, from our uh, Beyond Basic Phonics English Morphology 101. And now we're going to be uh, continuing our study of the Anglo-Saxon prefixes. So we call this Anglo-Saxon prefixes by the Roman numeral two. Uh, let's start out here. Number one, we have the suffix ship. And it, you, when you put that at the end of a word, it's, it indicates a quality, a state, or a condition. So let's look at these. Fellowship. Fellowship. A, a, a fellow is like a, it's kind of like the same as a friend, somebody you know. And so uh, fellowship is when you like to do the same thing somebody else does, and you all do it. So it's like they go to a football game or a music concert, and they have fellowship. Next we have citizenship, and I my citizenship is uh, with America. Perhaps yours is with a, another uh, nation in our world, and I'm, I'm sure you're as proud as your country as I am of mine. We have ownership, when you own something. Friendship, that's a great word, very similar to, to uh, fellowship. So when you have friends, you have friendship. And we treasure friendship, and we have scholarship. And scholarship is when a scholar comes to the idea of school or education. And so uh, maybe you uh, are getting ready to go to college, and you get a scholarship that will help pay for it. Next, we have L-Y, which means like or characteristic. And uh, this is also um, what identifies a word as an adverb in English. And so we have carefully, he carefully did his work, likely, you're very likely to read better when you finish Beyond Basic Phonics, unlikely, students who are not taught are unlikely to learn, ably, that means you're uh, good at it, and it, it means basically the same as the next word, capably. He uh, was uh, capably, kindly. He was a kindly uh, man. Uh, he treated the people kindly, unkindly. Oh my goodness, that would be the opposite, wouldn't it? Un means not. We know that. Friendly, uh, a friendly person, or a, or a doggy that's friendly likes to lick your hand. Brotherly. We talk about brotherly kindness and sisterly. Next, we're going to be studying the uh, past his ending ed, and this is tricky. It has three sounds. It's pronounced ed, that's as a, as a separate syllable, after the d, the t, and the d. After the uh, after a d, it's a voice. It's, excuse me, it's pronounced D after a voice letter and T after a voiceless letter. And if you studied um, my, the phonovisual charts, you will know that the voice letter, we call them uh, noisy cousins, and the voiceless letters, we call the um, quiet cousins. So let's take a look at these. And... Um, we have ed at uh, we okay so we got the, the number one here then we have e, uh, ed that's pronounced ed as a separate syllable so we have um, added one plus one equals two acted he acted in a Shakespearean play counted he counted his blessings crowded the bus was crowded ended. They ended the play. Folded, fold up the paper. Landed, they landed the spaceship on the moon. I remember that, by the way. Lighted, they lighted a fire. Painted, painted a picture. Now notice, this is all things that happened in the past. Planted, planted a flower. Printed, they printed a, a, le a letter. Rested, they rested after a hard day's work and waited. He waited uh, to be served. Notice in each one of these, you have a D or a T. 
and I'm trying to put bold on there. There you have a T, you have a D. So whenever you see the D or the T, you know that the ED is going to be a separate syllable pronounced ed. Now, if the next, or excuse me, if the, the letter in front of it, if the letter in front is a um, voiced letter, voiced consonant, or voiced letter, it's just going to have the sound of D and D. So here we have an M, mm, you can hear that's voice, you can hear the M, mm, and so now we have aimed, and let's go through this. He, 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 uh, he aimed his camera, burned, I burned the toast, called, he called his neighbor on the phone, changed, he changed his mind, or she changed her mind. This is interesting. Filed. He filed the, the paper. And then we have filled. And notice the only difference between those two is that one L there. So in the first one, and I don't have a, I don't have my marker on, so I can't draw the um, macron. But filed, the I, F I is at the the I's the vowels at the end of a syllable. So it's an open syllable, and it's going to be long. But in filled, you have two consonants. So the second consonant closes that syllable, and it's going to be the short vowel, filled. And I'm sure you studied that uh, in depth when you studied um, your basic phonics, especially if you studied with me with my natural phonics primer. Next, we have named. They named the baby. Saved. He saved the day. Rained, it rained and rained. Rolled, um, he rolled in the dirt. Stayed, he stayed at home because he was not feeling good. And turned, he turned round and round. Now the last ones, we have the T sound. T -t -t -t. Um, and in these, the consonant or the letter in front of the ed is going to be voiceless that's one of the quiet cousins so let's read these together baked boxed camped let me uh, go back baked he baked a cake boxed they boxed the present put it in a box camped they camped out for the weekend hitched he hitched his pony pitched he pitched them all Hopped, the bunny hopped, hoped. Mr. Potter hopes you un you got this right <laughs> because notice the difference between hopped, hopped, and hoped. And again, the difference is this consonant closes this syllable and makes that O short. So that's a closed syllable. And the O here is at the end of the syllable, so we call that an open syllable, and that will be the word hoped. They look a lot alike and uh, easy to confuse if you're not paying attention. The context will always uh, help you there. Jumped, he jumped high yesterday. Liked, he liked the movie. Licked, my beautiful dog licked my hand. Looked, he looked around. Packed, my wife packed me a good lunch. Pitched, he pitched the ball. Stopped, he stopped the car and wished. And I wish everybody could study my Beyond Blend Phonics because it would all help everybody, anybody, even adults, I do believe, to become a better and more accomplished reader. Thank you. We'll see you with, in uh, for Lesson 8.